everybody, Carl Schuf, Snorkel.tv here, and I just want to give you guys a little recap on what I've been up to over at Active Toots Plus. I know you've probably been thinking there hasn't been any new content here for a while, so I want to get into that real quick and then give you a behind-the-scenes look at some of the new projects I've been working on, what I've been learning, and what I want to share with you. I've got some really cool stuff in the works, and I got a nice Christmas gift for all of you. So sit back, watch, and trust me, you will be very interested in what I'm going over here. So, first things first, for six weeks I've been actively involved with Active Toots Plus and creating the Timeline Light Ultimate Starter Guide. Over six weeks I've created six videos that nearly total three hours of training on Timeline Light and Timeline Max. And this was an awesome experience every week creating a new 30 minute video, source files, documentation, and then just immediately on to the next. And really guys, if you watch this series, you will know 90% of what I know about Timeline Light and definitely 100% of what you need to know to become really skilled very quickly. So please check it out and enjoy. It's awesome. Now, this experience of doing so much concentrated training really made me realize, you know what? It's been a while since I've actually learned something. And after creating three hours of videos, I was like, you know what? I need to just take a break and learn something. And usually that can be a little bit hard to get started. And in the back of my mind, I've always been thinking about this puzzle maker that I made when I migrated from AS2 to AS3. And I'm talking about just the natural language conventions of AS2, the, the commands and the syntax, to learning the AS3 display list and event system. And I built this puzzle maker, which allows you to load an image, and then you can take that image and either split it up into 12 pieces or 48 pieces. For this demo, I'm just going to do the 12 pieces. And then when I hit play, you get this really cool um, animation. And I now have all of these tiles shuffled. And when I put them in the right spot, they light up. And so I can just very quickly interact with this puzzle here. So it just took a very basic image and made it into a puzzle. Now, when I built this, um, when I was done, I was pretty much convinced that, you know, I can tell somebody, yes, I can build a project in AS3 and I can do some pretty cool stuff. But I hadn't touched a line of OOP. And literally, this functionality for this puzzle here is in a frame script of an FLA, and it's 800 lines of code plus. That doesn't include everything that I created for uh, loading the images with XML, creating the rollover effects, I'm basically building the uh, gallery system that I'm using or any of the uh, panel interaction. So it was 800 lines of code just to get the puzzle functionality in. And I've loved this project, but I've always been sort of terrified of going back into it. And this week I finally bit the bullet and said, you know what, I really gotta... Adobe, I said, don't call me. Hold on, guys. So as I was saying, I really needed to jump onto the OOP bandwagon. I've read tons of books, I've read some great tutorials, which I'm going to share with you later, which were a huge help. But I said, you know what, let me just buckle down and try to build something simple. So I started with what I'm calling my bitmap tile grid class. And my bitmap tile grid class is going to just take a display object and bust it up into bitmap tiles which are gonna contain just little pieces of the original bitmap, and it's gonna arrange them all in order. So in this FLA file that I have here, I have a very simple image, and I'm calling it image MC. In the document class for this file, I am creating a new bitmap tile grid, which is my own custom class, and I'm telling it the image to use, how many columns, and how many rows that I want. So by just setting it up and creating it, um, I now have access to this whole grid of tiles. And once a bitmap tile grid is created, um, I also want to make sure that I add it to the stage. And there we go. And then I'm going to turn the original image's visibility to false, and here's where all the magic is going to take place. My bitmap tile grid has a tiles array property. So I'm going to pass that into a tween max all from, and the tiles array is just a list of all the individual tiles inside that bitmap tile grid. And I'm just going to do a very simple tween max all from an alpha of 0 with a stagger of 0 0.2. So this is a very typical usage. And you'll see that each tile now fades in and blah, blah, blah. It's a little bit on the slow side. Um, so let's speed that up. We'll have each 
animation take maybe 0.4 seconds. And we'll set this stagger value to 0.02. So now it's going to be wicked fast, tiles coming in, and it's just an array of tiles, and each tile fades in. Now we can do some things that are better than just a simple alpha fade. Um, I could also tween from, let's just say, a rotation x of negative 180. And you're going to start to see, oh wow, you can do some pretty cool stuff with this. All right. And again, a lot of it has to do with, you know, how long is each tween, if it's one second or maybe, I don't know, 0.05 seconds of stagger, you can get wildly different effects. And now you see, wow, it looks like I spent hours building this. Nope. But we don't just need to always have a grid. I could also just say, you know what, give me uh, 50 columns, but only one row. And you're going to start to see... Oh, I wasn't thinking that would happen. 50 columns, so columns go up and down, and there's only one row of them. If I switch that around a little bit, let's do one row, I'm sorry, one column, and 50 rows. You're going to start seeing that we can get wildly different effects here. Oh, nice little Venetian blinds effect. And when you start just adding very simple parameters, maybe all of the Y values will start at zero. Check this out. You're going to love this. Save. Vroom. Wow. It's like watery, magical, and just so much fun. I'm going to bring this value back down to 0.02, and let's bring this back to 1. And now when you speed that up, that's pretty cool. It's very rare these days that I surprise myself or stumble onto something that I really wasn't quite expecting. But when I was testing this, I just literally had to take a second and say, I just made that with one line of code. And watch what happens if I take this one simple line of tween code, and I'm going to say yo-yo true, repeat, negative one. Now just sit back, folks. This is going to be phenomenal. Wow. It, that's my sound effect, but check it out. You get this craziness. Now, if somebody told me, Carl, I want this sort of Venetian blind slash flaggy, wavy, yet semi-transparent with a weird glare effect thing, I'd say, listen, you're crazy. That's for people who know things like math. Um, but just playing around with these little parameters and the all from, again, you get wildly different effects. Now you may say, now I've seen it all, but hold your horses, guys, because I'm going to kick it up to another notch. And what I'm going to do is let's step away from my little bitmap tile grid for just a second, and I'm going to do this. You might notice that sneaking around up here, I have import tv.snorkel.puzzle.puzzle. Yes, folks, I gave it a shot. So I'm going to say var pz is going to be a puzzle. I'm going to create a new puzzle. And what does my puzzle want? It wants a target image and columns and rows. So I'm going to say image mc. I'm going to say let's do three columns, three rows, keep it simple, and let's just add child pz. So two little lines of code and no he didn't! Yes, I did. And you may have been asking earlier, why is there a ladybug in the top right-hand corner? So that I know where the top right-hand piece is. Aha. So I'm going to build my little sun there, my little fun rainbow. Homeboy goes here. And I think you need your orange butt. And then when my puzzle is complete, which it is not, let me slide you over here. I will know because the whole thing flashes. So I took a simple image and I said, you know what, let's turn you into a puzzle. Now what's nice about this is that the puzzle class, and maybe it's not nice, I don't know, but I think it's nice. The puzzle class that I'm using, hello finder, aha, my puzzle class um, uses something called a puzzle tile. And what's really happening is that my puzzle is saying, hey, you know what, why don't you build a bitmap tile grid I'm going to take all your bitmap tiles 
and I'm going to add additional functionality to them, or my puzzle tile is going to include a bitmap tile, and I'm going to add things like the border, the fancy flashes, and just some properties that are specific to a bitmap tile when it's used in the context of a puzzle. I want to show you, too, that my puzzle doesn't just have to be a 3x3 three three grid. I could say that we're going to have six columns, and we're going to have one row. We'll save this and check it out. So now I have a different type of puzzle, but the hit detection works really well. The swap Rooney works really well. I don't move stuff over. If I drag a piece and yet I don't commit to dropping it on something, it knows to go back home and I can bring this piece over here and I have a fun little puzzle. And by dictating how many tiles or rows or columns I have, you know, I can increase the difficulty. I've been using this and testing it extensively um, here's you know, my Puzzle Builder Pro, as I'm calling it right now. This weekend I was cleaning my car. You know how you get that weird feeling when you're in the back seat of your own car? You're like, this is odd. So I just snapped a quick little picture. You know, I got a nice little shine going there. It's happy. Um, let's test this out. And if I hit Puzzle 8, you know, then that creates the puzzle and I can start moving my pieces around, putting them where they want to go. And if I ever want to cheat a little bit, you know, I can have functionality built in, or I can say show image, and, uh, you know, so it's, it's getting pretty slick. And I gotta say that it was just so rewarding to take that 800 lines of slop and put them into individual nice little custom classes. You know, I, as far as I see OOP right now, it gives me a nice way of breaking up my messes into small chunks, so at least I can get through them. It's sort of like my draw of video cables and serial connector mice. You know, if I ever need a VGA cable or an HDMI cable, you know, it's going to be in a pile of spaghetti, but at least I know where that pile of spaghetti is. And really, you know, I think my classes are coming along and, and they're quite neat, but it's my first time out. So, you know, I know there's lots of room for improvement and there's a lot that I need to clean up in the puzzle. I got to build some helper functions for cleaning up and disposing. And I really want to build my custom event system. So uh, there's still work to be done there. But bitmap tile grid and bitmap tile are fairly clean and, uh, you know, they get the job done. So they've worked really well with my Puzzle Builder Pro. Um, I just want to flex the Puzzle Builder just a little bit, the, the muscle of it. So let's go into my document class here. And when I build the puzzle for the uh, car, I'm going to say, hey, you know what? Let's make you, let's say, 40 by 50. And you're just going to be like, you're ridiculous. Um, what I really want to let you know, though, is that, oh, you'll never solve this puzzle. All right? So it's been really exciting to get this to this point. I'm going to give you the bitmap tile grid class and its little helper class, bitmap tile. Uh, so I really want you to bang on that. If you have any improvements at all that you would like to suggest, hey, just let me know because, you know, I'm learning and I know a good deal of you guys are much more advanced in this stuff than I am. For all you people out there who want to, you know, keep learning this stuff, there are two resources that I cannot give a stronger recommendation to. Uh, the first one is the AS3 101 series by Drew Keppel on Active Tuts Plus. And really, it is like, it's better than any book that I've ever read on the subject. And you may look through some of these section headings and be like, yeah, you know, I kind of get the idea of inheritance setters and getters. But Drew goes into such detail with such great examples and explanations, explanations, you like that word? Um, graphics, and there was no shortcuts taken, and he just takes the time to really make it clear to people who are learning this stuff for the first time. Um, and there's just so many steps, and you know, he'll just he just gets into it. And I, I couldn't give this guy a higher recommendation. Secondly, here we have the Learn Action Script Three by following the simple avoider game tutorial. This was made by Michael James Williams, who was my editor at Active Touch Plus when I was building the Timeline Light Ultimate Starter Guide. I've been putting off drawing a lot of attention to this because it sounds kind of weird when a guy you're working with, you're like, oh, he's the best in the world. Uh, but now that we have a little hiatus, you know what? You got to check this guy out. This 12-part series is going to walk you through building a game. And step by step, Michael goes into such detail 
that it's ridiculous. He's pretty much the best there is at creating step-by-step -step instructions, um, explaining technical concepts, and doing it in a way that you really forget that you're being taught something that's advanced. Um, I've read through this entire tutorial and it made so many things click for me. And each chapter is just jam-packed full of knowledge. You gotta check it out, you gotta read the source files. This tutorial's been translated into many languages, so you really have no excuse. It's just absolutely primo. So between the AS3101 series, which I would call, you know, just pretty much the best reference source you can have for OOP and AS3 concepts, and then you have the avoider game where basically if you get through it all and create the files and, and build this project out, you're going to be in great shape. So I just really want to encourage you guys to learn. And I know that from personal experience, learning what I learned building the puzzle builder this past week, it's just been, you know, it's been a challenge. It's tough. It's not always easy, but it feels so good. So that's my spiel. Now I want to end this by saying if you've been watching and I love you, um, I want to give away a green sock, really green membership. So the first person to comment at snorkel.tv on this post and tell me what type of car this is, of course I know, uh, you're going to get really green. So everybody else, for Christmas, you are getting a bitmap tile grid, but let's make it a little bit fun. So there you are, guys. I'll catch you in the new year. Have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and Great New Year.